So typically my joy was short-lived. I thought, because I had it running for about 10 seconds, it sounded all right. But then I went to drive it out to turn it around to get the front up in the air to do the uh, the bleeding of the coolant. And it just, it just wouldn't hold any revs. It just tr kept trying to die. Even when I was giving, giving it some revs to keep it alive, it was, um, it was still trying to die. So I'm hoping it's the petrol, because the petrol's been in there probably, this is, this is my fault, it's been in there like seven months probably. Since my last track day in October I think. So hopefully that makes sense because it started for, and it ran alright for about 10 seconds, so whether that was the fuel in the fuel filter which is a bit more sealed, less um, exposure to oxygen or I don't know, whatever. Uh, so I'm gonna have to siphon out, typically I've got half a tank in there. So I've just got myself a jerry can and a nice length of hose pipe. So we're gonna try and um, siphon that out and then I've got some fresh petrol to put in. And hopefully that fixes it, if not, I don't know where to start really, whether I just, well, we'll see, we'll see how we get on. So there's the intake off again. A lot quicker the second time, obviously, because you sort of know what you're doing as much as you can, or well, me anyway. One thing I did notice though is I could actually take the intake off without removing the sump, not oh, sorry, sump, the uh, dipstick. Couldn't get the pipe to come off. I don't know whether we're better to see it. Uh, Anyway, you've got like the CCV pipe that comes from the bottom of the CCV and goes and joins up with the uh, the dipstick. Couldn't get that to pull off, so I just I managed to reach through like where the throttle body is and um, and basically you know pinch pinch these in to unplug it underneath the CCV. I haven't found anything obvious to why. It's running like a bag of shit. What I'll do is I'll have a good check of everything. Put it back together, I suppose. If I can't find any problems. And hopefully my fuel pressure kit will turn up at some point. So I'm not sure exactly. I don't know whether you just turn the ignition on so it primes the fuel pump. And then you check the fuel pressure there. I don't know yet. I'll have to find out. I haven't done it before. What can I say? Pain in the ass. It's just another thing I realised from doing it again. Um, is that you don't need to disconnect the fuel line. You can just move it out of the way. What I've done this time, I think I might have mentioned it in one of the other clips maybe, is disconnected. That's the pipe that runs over the top of the engine. It goes off towards like the, the brake um, servo, I don't know what it's called. Anyway, that's what connects to this. So I've taken the clip off there. This time makes it a hell of a lot easier because you can just move it to the side. Um, it's a lot easier to take the intake off. So here we are, day 150, working on the E46. Uh, no, I don't know what day it is. This fucking has gone on forever. So I've ordered, waiting for some new parts. Um, Seeing as I've got all the intake off again, or the inlet manifold, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I thought I might as well do the cam sensors and the knock sensors. So there was a bit of a delay getting them. So I've got them now, I'm going to stick them in, put it all back together. 
and hopefully I can test the fuel pressure. Uh, I've had a right pain in the ass trying to get a fuel pressure kit that fits. You'd have thought that uh, what they called um, Schrader. That's it. You'd have thought the Schrader valve would be quite a common attachment, but yeah, apparently not. So the pack, I, the set I've got. None of that fit, so I couldn't find one anywhere. So what I've bought is a just a tire, just like an air pressure gauge. I managed to get a pipe then that should attach to the Schrader valve. Um, it's got like a little pressure release thing as well, so maybe I'll try and put a little pipe on that. So any so when it releases the fuel pressure, it will go into like a bottle or something. Um, so let's have a little look at the uh, the new sensors I've got. Um, maybe in the the air pressure gauge. Maybe I'll have a look at the fuel pressure gauge as well to show you what I've bought and what doesn't fit. Uh, a bit annoyed because it said on the description that it fits Schrader, so a bit pissed off for that. But let's have a little look. First of all, there's the uh, pain in the ass fuel pressure testing kit that I bought which none of it fits uh, might be useful for other cars but yeah a bit annoyed about that that was about I think this one's about 32 quid so what I've got in the end after much debating and going around in circles trying to find one of these that actually fits a Schrader valve a few of those of you who don't know Schrader valves just like the normal valve you get on your car tires so quite common you would have thought so I've bought this which is just an air pressure gauge and it came with a I think it's a quarter BSP female end on there so I managed to find the quarter BSP male to Schrader valve uh, female screw on end so hopefully that will work uh, the pressure release things just there, so I'm going to try. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there because I can't really get a pipe over it. I'm be able to push the button, might be able to, or I might just put a cloth over it while I press it. So hopefully that will work once I put it all back together. And then we've got a knock sensor. This is a Siemens one. Um, I know a lot of people say use authentic BMW stuff. To be honest, I don't think these are that complicated, so I can't see how a, a non-standard part won't do. I know people are going to argue about that. But Siemens, pretty good brand anyway, so that's that. And then we've got the two cam sensors, the one that's got the cable on it, which goes, sort of plugs in where all the other rest of the cables are coming out below the throttle body that sort of harness there so that plugs in there and then this one it's been a couple of weeks I can't remember where this one goes I think it's I will find out anyway in one of the videos I can't remember whether it's around the other side of the engine or not probably wise to if you've got all the intake off, I should probably should have thought about replacing these sensors anyway. But I mean, I've got it off again, so I'm going to do it on the second time. And then hopefully we're going to find some kind of fuel pressure issue because it's not throwing up any any codes. But so I've changed the fuel filter recently. I've changed the uh, fuel pump, but whether the fuel pump seized up from not being used maybe it's not working properly maybe it's crap and i'm also going to just check that the the vacuum line that goes to the fuel filter that's okay the top end is okay i've replaced with some new um, vacuum hose so hopefully the we'll have a look at the bottom if i can get it in the air as well so there's the two different uh exhaust cam sensors there's the original one obviously the oily one and then the new one. So the original one's got a little BMW stamp on that. So it's obviously a BMW one. Um, 
or whether it's made by another company and they just stamp it and pretend it's BMW, I don't know. So the new one looks pretty similar except for obviously this bit's quite thick compared to that. So hopefully it fits and works properly. I'll give it a go, I'll put some oil on the o-ring, I'll clean the, the hole out a bit where it goes. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to get out, that clip didn't want to let go. As I pulled the fan out, just to make it easier, give you a bit of room. And this, you have to pinch there and there to get it to release from these little clips on the side. So I was using like some needle nose pliers to try and squeeze the little release bits on the side and then try and pull it out at the same time. But once that was off, you can just about see where it screws in. Oops. Let me just, let's see if I just drop the camera down a bit. Yeah, I can see as well now. So there we are, that's where it goes. It's a little T30. Yeah, T30 screw holds that in. So yeah, I'm going to give that whole a little bit of clean up and then uh, lubricate that one and chuck it in then move on to the, the inlet one. Oh yeah don't forget to fish the seal out if it was anything like mine it stayed in the hole so you have to sort of grab it with a little screwdriver or something. So now for the uh, the intake uh, intake uh, cam sensor so I've just removed the sensor that's up here for the um, I don't know what it is actually it's up by the Vanos one that plugs in there, that one there. So that's a 32 mil spanner, gets that off. I have to actually try and find out what it is. Sorry, I'm a bit useless. I don't tend to find out what things are unless I need to do something with them, if that makes sense. Anyway, probably not. Right, let's try and get this one out now. So I'm starting to doubt whether the, um, the exhaust uh, cam sensor the, the little nut, uh, little bolt holding it on. Because I said it was a T30, I'm starting to wonder whether it was an Allen, because this one on the intake side is an Allen, an Allen um, bolt. The other one, I've taken a photo of it and I can't really see. It's really difficult to see. Um, I should have looked at it while it was off, but I just kind of assumed because it undid with a T30 um, that it was just, that was correct. So used to using torque bits on this engine. So yeah, don't take my word for it's T30. It might be an Allen key one, but I can't really see without taking that bloody connector off. And it took long enough to get it off first time. Looks like I have to use some old school Allen keys. So I can't actually get an Allen key socket and the wrench in that gap. Um, so yeah, these don't come out very often. Just had to unwind the, uh, the banjo bolt up here by the Vanos again, just to give it a bit of slack, so I've got a bit of room to pull out the sensor. The new one I bought, for some reason, and get out. Uh, it's non-returnable if I open this bag, which is a bit odd. So I need to try and hopefully get this one off and compare it to that one in the bag and see if it looks right. So I've compared them as good as I can while it's still in a bag, it looks alright. Looks about the same length, connector looks the same, sensor looks the same. So he's going to commit to it. Living life on the edge. Let's see if my gung-ho attitude paid off. So there we are. Our little bad boys in. So I did notice, I think there's a bit of Loctite on the, the screw or little bolt that holds the two cam sensors, uh, the cam sensors in. So I'll put a bit of Loctite on them. Don't do it up crazy tight because you, you, you know you tighten a bit of plastic up. Uh, put the banjo bolt back in and I put this for want of a better name the Vanos sensor back in 
and then I've just thread this cable from the cam sensor just underneath like where the um, oil pressure sensor is back and plugged it in underneath the bottom of this uh, this harness so hopefully that's that done oh, the Allen key was a 5 that I used for undoing that one <clears throat> So the knock sensors are pretty easy. Two 13mm bolts. The uh, hardest bit was trying to unplug this. Because you typically you gotta pry two little clips away on this to allow this to slide out. And yeah, typically one broke, so I've got a trusty cable tie which goes round the one remaining clip to make sure that that can't open up and let it release. I've had a bit of a tug on it and it's pretty damn secure so you can fix most things with a cable tie can't you? So I reckon I'm good to put the inlet manifold back on. Couldn't really find anything I'd done wrong. I mean I've changed those few sensors but that's just because just because, well, I don't know. I should then start with. I should just do everything, do everything you can while it's off. But anyway, uh, only thing I've maybe done a bit better is cleaning where the inlet manifold gasket touches the the engine, giving that a really good clean, and the same. Same on the uh, the inlet manifold, giving that a good clean. Gasket was a little bit mucky as well. Well, those are the new gasket, so I've cleaned that up as well. So I'm going to get it back on, and once it's all back on, I can see if it runs. And if it doesn't, then I'll have to try and check the fuel pressure. And then if there's nothing wrong with the fuel pressure, I ain't got a Scooby Doo. It's, yeah, it's not throwing up any errors. There we are. Okay, we'll find out. Don't forget to pull all your bits of paper towel or whatever you've been blocking all the holes up with. Also, we managed to get some some caps. So instead of having that bit of pipe with a fucking golf tee or whatever it was stuck in there, I've actually put a um, proper cap on it. So yeah, looks a bit tidier. So there's the gasket back on. Let's try and get it on then. So a good tip I find, uh, especially when you're putting these nuts on the intake, it's easy to, especially the first two on either end, easy just to lose a nut down there. So what I do is put it on the end of a magnet and get the first couple of lines of thread on and then Obviously just remove the magnet and carry on Bob's your uncle. So it's been all systems go here. Let me refer to the the list of destiny. Uh, so we've thread the power cable. There it is. Thread up in between the last cylinder of the intake. Or in that manifold, whatever you want to call it. So you thread that up as you put the intake on and also connect the two air hoses underneath and I uh, disconnected the the pipe that goes to the the um, dipstick can't really see it so you disconnected it from underneath the CC the CCV valve so I've connected that back up uh, I'll put these other CCV pipe back on. Just making sure nothing's trapped where it shouldn't be. All these cables and what have you. I've obviously got the inlet manifold back on. Um, and I've just been putting the fuel rail back on. So I've, I think the first time I did it, I 
put the injectors in and then I put the fuel rail on the injectors. But yeah, it seems a lot easier to connect the um, the injectors to the fuel rail. It's just easy to get the clips on then. You just chuck the um, tuck the clip on the top of the fuel. Of the, let me start again. Tuck the clip on the top of the injector, and as you push it into the fuel rail, it just click here, it click into place. So I put all six on the fuel rail, and I've just pushed that back in, and then I've just got to put a few bolts in there. Um, this is as far as I've got. And now another exciting update. Uh, we've got the injector harness. Those six plugs clipped in to the injectors. Uh, we've connected this back in. Uh, I was going to say it's a Vanos sensor. Don't know what it is. I'll have to find out one day. Uh, plug that one back in on top of the in inlet manifold. Well, to be done, we've put the power steering reservoir back, throttle body back in, the idle valve, and then we've connected the bracket that holds this harness in place. Uh, just put this little bracket back on, that just little torque screw down there, or torque bolt, whatever it is. Uh, connected things as I go along, the throttle body, uh, idle. Anything else I've missed? Oops. Okay, and I'll just put this back in. It's a little rubber mount that slides back on. And that's where we are at the moment. Uh, time for... I'm going to put the lower hose on now. And then the Dicer upper hose. And that's about it. i just got to connect the power cable back up over there and connect this hose back up and jobs are good in. All right people we've got it to a stage where I can actually start it we'll try anyway um, not gonna do that today could do with leaving this till tomorrow I reckon so what they've done since the last last clip uh, good question so we've got the lower hose on, lower intake hose, we've got the dicer back in, uh, the upper hose, uh, we've got the fan back in, we connect up, we've got the MAF sensor connector in and the dicer connector, any other connectors we've done along the way, uh, we've got the power cable back in. Um, it's so got the Jubilee clip on here where I disconnected it. Just clip these cables for the O2 sensors back in their little clips. Um, yeah, apart from see the air box and the little corner heat shield or whatever it is, little plastic thing. But I'm not going to bother putting them on until, until we know it's running right. So yeah, I'm going to call it a day today. Going to put my feet up and then uh, see if it starts tomorrow and if it runs. Um, got a feeling it's just going to be exactly the same as before I took it apart the second time. Because I haven't really, there's nothing I've had to fix. So yeah, we'll see if there's any fuel pressure or decent fuel pressure. I'm hoping it's just something like that and then at least I know for sure I need to change the fuel pump or something like that. Alright, see you in the morning, Beamer. So surprisingly, it still ran like a bag of shit. So join me on the next episode where we'll check the fuel pressure and uh, we'll also finally get to the bottom of what the problem is. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.